My name is Chris. I'm Andy. And I'm Steve. Uh, I'm Sam. <laughs> That's Sam. Hey. Sam's back. Hey. She's back too. This is Streaming Things, a Stranger Things podcast. We're the unofficial podcast for Stranger Things, usually. And then when it's not on, we just Other morph. Things. It's morphing time. Oh, We call oh. them Power Rangers. Oh. <laughs> Guys, I'm feeling it. I'm Why feeling is your it. hand moving, We're back. Steve? We're back. <laughs> it's Stranger Things. It's back. I can't see anything. Feels very uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't. I don't express emotion well. <laughs> Sorry, but we're back. It's, um, Stranger Things is back. It's like coming home. All right. We're Made doing it. what we do best, and uh, things have changed a little bit. We're back in Steve's dining room. Steve and Sam. I'm sorry. This okay. is your equal ownership of this dining room area. She owns more of it. It's 2019, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, we just watched straight off, hot off the TV. We weren't on the TV. We were near it. Watching the first episode of Stranger Things Season 3. Now, for me, I haven't seen much trailer action because Steve warned me earlier on the trailer. Was, so, did I miss anything yet or is it later on? I think probably next episode. You yeah. Might. Steve warned me there were some spoilery things in the trailer. So I'm very disappointed in you, Netflix, first off. <laughs> Uh, and I was, I think I know the answer to this, but I was thinking as we were <clears throat> beginning to watch the first episode, h- how many of you uh, rewatched season two in preparation for this recently? Is, Not it, me. is it only me? I didn't watch the the show. I actually re-listened to our episodes that we re-released. I know. Isn't that fun? Yeah, mm-hmm. It is. And it's like, oh, we, we were funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you, dear listeners, also listen to the re-released episodes. But I actually watched season two because I'd only seen it the one time. And I've seen season one like four times. So I didn't think that was fair. Yeah. So. I've actually seen season two of Stranger Things uh, three times. Okay. What? Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I watched it once with us, once with Sam, and once on my own. But all, it was like all in the same time around, right? The first two was. I think I watched it by myself again like a couple months later. But. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch this all with my uh, significant other when I get home. So I'll get I, to see this season twice. <laughs> I just watched the recap here at the beginning of this episode. That's it. I'm, yep. I'm ill prepared. I'm in that club too. Well, okay, recap. so that would be a good perspective then because we've got multiple different, you know, uh, views with which to, to look at this. So that's awesome. What's the cop's name? Hooper? <laughs> right. <laughs> Harbor. I remember back in the beginning when Steve <laughs> kept calling him Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. What did you guys think of that recap before he... It was epic. It was Very really lengthy. Good. Cut strange because it was going back and forth a bit. Yeah. Um, so I, I, since I watched it like literally two days ago, the entire season, I was like, oh, interesting. Interesting way to cut that. Um, but yeah. I, I, I loved it. I thought it was a really... It, I was sitting there like, wow, it was a lot, a lot better than I remembered. Like, not that I didn't like it when season two came <laughs> out, but I was like... You know, fuck, I, I really wish I rewatched that. I thought it was weird that they didn't show Dart at all. Um, his, um, Dustin's little yeah. Demogorgon. Yeah. The one with the yellow like, butt. That, that was a pretty big arc. He actually ended up at the end uh, that came into play when he got to feed him nougat so everybody could sneak around. Like, Dart did have some kind of affinity, even as uh, adolescent Demogorgon for right. Dustin. So, But that would explain his reaction in his house in this Oh, episode. Well, I, yeah, we're talking about this episode already. Yeah, yeah go well. for it. <laughs> <laughs> Just what I willy nilly. Uh, well, I also wanted to mention. So I want to see who had rewatched it. Uh, we did also notice that um, the first season had eight episodes. Season two had nine, and now we're back to eight. So we've lost an episode. I was hoping for ten, but apparently this is not. You know, as long as it serves a story. If if they got to a point where they're like, eh, if we add an extra episode that's going to pad the story and slow things down, that's fine. Yeah. Sure. If, if that's what the story requires, m- more power to you. The but- Duffers are deft, as I've mentioned many times before, <laughs> so I'm not worried about that. Uh, so the first episode of season three, holy shit, we're here, right? <laughs> that's that what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's chapter one, Susie, do you copy? And Netflix describes it thusly. Summer brings new jobs and budding romance, but the mood shifts when Dustin's radio picks up a Russian broadcast and Will senses something is wrong. I'm really not sure. Spoilers. I disagree. I don't think that is what happens or when the mood shifts, but I'll, uh, whatever, Netflix. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did not pick that up at all. (laughs) 
So I try not to read the things. Steve started scrolling down to see how many episodes there were. I'm like, oh my God, I've hurt my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad that we didn't read that because holy shit, Netflix, you've lost your mind. I'm done. First off, I'm sorry, I keep digressing. What, we had to actually go to the search tab and type in Stranger Things. Yeah. To, qu- <laughs> to quickly yeah. find. What the fuck? This is hands down Netflix's biggest show. Am I wrong? All right. Yeah, yeah definitely. And maybe at one time Peaky Blinders or Orange is the New Black. But I would say mm-hmm. this is hands down right now. At least currently. Their yeah. biggest show. Yeah. It was not on the banner. It was not a couple tabs down. It definitely wasn't no, on Steve's w- continue watching, which we already knew. I saw uh, the IT crowd before Stranger Things, <laughs> <laughs> which <laughs> nothing <laughs> against IT crowd, but that's an old ass show. They're trying <laughs> to push some things. Uh, yeah, kind of frustrated about that. So anyway, the show opens uh, in a laboratory with two keys, right? Some nuclear uh, illusions right mm-hmm. off the bat. You got to have two keys to turn it. What's going on? We don't know, right? And some technology that immediately seemed beyond where the humans are at in the 80s to me. 1984 even, specifically? Yes. June 28th, 1984. Yeah. Yes. 20, uh, which would take they place. On it, <laughs> they, did, they did. So they did this. 6 84 That's like, what, a month after the end of last season, right? Because it was definitely 1984. And what so a, with school ending and summer beginning, it'd be about a month or two after mm. the last season. Okay. So that now we're at... A year and two months later, because he said you have one, you have one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So that's where I'm. Th- I'm just thinking, like, mm-hmm. I think we're a year past season two, but I could be wrong about that. Yeah, it was actually. To, sorry, no, you go ahead. I was actually kind of a cool reveal during that scene. Like, it was nonverbal for the first like yes. two or three minutes, and it ends and, with them being Russian. Yeah, yeah. that was pretty. Because cool. we're like, is this Hawkins lab shit? What's going on? Right. These fuckers yeah. don't quit, do they? <laughs> and then, uh, and Sam pointed out some Chernobyl vibes, which I I wrote. So I wrote Chernobyl vibes. Before I knew they were Russian, and then I had a shit fit. Like, oh my god! Uh, so if you haven't seen Chernobyl, that's awesome. Um, I I was expecting that whole scene. Anytime like someone would enter a room, like here he is, Doctor Brenner, oh. <laughs> and then someone would enter the corner, there he is, Doctor. <laughs> no, that's just some other guy. And I'm just like so excited, Doctor. No, where is he at? And Doctor Brenner is 100 percent coming back this season, right? He has to. He has to. They they alluded so much to it last yeah. season with uh, what's his face, the sec- the security guard that um, eight and them killed was like he's alive. Do you think he's gonna be like um, Two Face? Like he's gonna have some <laughs> visible crazy Matthew Modine scar? Mm. That'd be pretty cool. I'm excited for it. He's got like little bite marks all around his face, where, like the, the <laughs> Demogorgon shadow mouth. Yeah, kind how of like, is he alive? <laughs> I That's don't know. Or Barbara. You, you would think his head was like squashed like a melon or something. Something. Yeah, and, and but but when the guys started speaking Russian, that was really a big like. Oh, they got me! <laughs> I, I I should have seen it coming because the one Russian general was clearly not wearing an American general outfit. But right. I, my my brain wasn't looking for that. So when they started talking Russian, I'm like, ha ha, cool. As <laughs> as soon as they showed the general with the outfit, I'm like, oh, we're in Russia now. Just watch Chernobyl. I know this. Yeah, <laughs> it, I know it the insignia. <laughs> when, when the uh, so the, the they turn the turbine on and there's that electric. It looks like they're trying to create their own goo gate. Yes. On the side of the mm-hmm. wall. They're trying um, to reopen the gate, I guess. I don't know why. And their big transformer turbine um, explodes and it melts all these guys. So I'm already not digging what's like, why? I don't understand. How, why, why what? How would they know that there was a gate? How, why would they want to we'll create one? We'll find out in the season. I, you think? Because they're Russian Maybe. spies. <laughs> and it's Russia. Remember the journalist? <laughs> Who the like fuck is spying in Indiana? <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, once once again with this episode, I'm like, okay, how big is Hawkins? Because we already established everything is just down the road from Will's it's house. From Merkwood, yes. Steve, now all of a sudden yeah, there's a community. Steve's house is central. Like everything is a mile <laughs> oh, away from house, Steve's house. house. <laughs> now all of a sudden there's a community pool and there's a giant fucking mall. I don't know where any of this is. Well, the stuff town's is. growing, Andy. But the right. mall must have just been built. Because Hawkins is so hot right now. Because it's, all these stores are now closing down. That mall, is true. The mall yeah. must Ooh, be brand new, which is one. why it's so crowded. Because, I mean, in our generation, I've never seen a mall that crowded before. Yes, malls are now dead. But in the 80s, they were hot. I remember being very young and remember the malls being not quite like, cause that was like ridiculously yeah, packed. I, was but like I remember the mall being when it was super cool to be at the mall in high school. Right? Like yeah. that was the thing to do is to hang out. You got the cool mall garden, and you can go eat, and then you can go to the movie, and then you shop. Is there a movie at the mall? Yeah, in the past, some malls. Yeah. Our yeah. Mall, Florence, y'all didn't have a movie theater. We weren't mm-hmm. that special, but Cincinnati Mills did. <laughs> I think the Kenwood Mall used to have a movie theater. Well, they did. Hawkins Kenwood is did, blowing yeah. up because they had national spotlight at the end of season two when. 
that guy published a story about how Barb died, which was wrong, but it was like Hawkins Lab had some kind of asphyxiated gas that leaked out and killed Barb. So, and it was like, it's the national spotlight. Anyway, I just watched it. So, yeah. but, but yeah, if you see that. that, that would not be an advertisement for me to go move into that town. No, right? but they you might get a grant a to build a mall. Problem. You know what um, I mean? Yeah, true. That's true. So, already though, I just want to point out. How the fuck does Russia know that this other dimension is possible? Why would they want to do that? Because nothing good came from it. Now, well, we do know that Eleven was spying on the Russians. Maybe that one Matthew Russian Martin. she was spying on was like, I think there was a little girl. <laughs> I think a little American girl tried to tap me on shoulder. And then she like, I don't know. It was weird. Doc, no, Dr. Brennan. Brennan Burner. Brenner. Brenner. He's a, a traitor. He's a Benedict Arnold. <gasps> Went to the Soviet Union. I like oh, that. That actually would make a lot Union. of sense for him to Sam, move somewhere else where he can done it. use his it. science skills. They allowed me to come to their country. I just offered them genes. <laughs> Dr. Brenner, do you speak Russian? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how's he going to do this? I, I thought some badass Steve. Duh. <laughs> was gonna come. Duh. So anyway, I also got, um, did anyone else pick like enter the into the Spider-Verse vibes up from that machine? Oh, dude, the the effects on it were weird. Like they were they were bad. It was like a they were bad weird missing frames thing. Like no mo- motion blur and yeah. yeah. I was gonna point that out. I, it's it's bad. Which they did that in into the Spider Verse. The turbine CG and the electricity, and they can get away with a lot in this show. And that's what's so genius and cool about it. Like you can't be like, oh my god, dude, Russians are so played out because it's an eighties illusion. It's like, oh, it's a trope. They're doing that on purpose. And like yeah. everything they do, you're like, it's on purpose. Right. I didn't think the turbines were. I mean, they were kind of subpar, but it wasn't like glaringly bad. I mm-hmm. thought the really bad shot was when the Russian general leaves the station and they've got that really awful CGI, CGI background. Like, this is snowy Russia, but it's like <laughs> that look. That doesn't look like anywhere in the world ever. Right. <laughs> North Dakota. <laughs> the effects when uh, the turbine fails and people's faces are getting melt off, melted off, that was actually pretty legit. I'm like, yeah. Hey. Well, they blew the whole budget for that episode there. Right. You know what I mean? Like, with the spinning, they're like, fuck, we forgot to make it spin. And the rest like, of it's going to take place in a field. I don't know why the filmmakers are also like pseudo Russian. Yes! Don't release it! <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's going on. They're trying to reopen the gate. The Good call, brothers. Sam. I, I fully believe you. I think Dr. Brenner has uh, defected to Russia, and that's how everyone knows about what can go down in the upside down. I'm living my best life. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to the uh, makeout sesh between uh, Mike and Eleven. Steamy. Creepy. They have started puberty. <laughs> Creepy? Yeah, did I said not steamy. like it. Mm. <laughs> Creepy in like a uh, Arya's having sex kind of way? Like no, you just don't like it because no, you've that, watched them grown up? No, that didn't bother me. They're, they still look like children. Aria mm. did, does not. Well, maybe. they still are children. They I believe. are children, and right. it's just creepy. It's like how they're old, old are they making out? Like fifteen, I think, at this point. Fourteen. Fourteen. I think they're fifteen because in season one, I think are eleven's they? thirteen. And he also he just looks well, that's weird. confusing. No offense to that actor. <laughs> I can't think of his name right now off the top of my head. Finn Wolfhard. Finn yeah. Wolfhard. Yeah, yeah, they definitely are like, old enough. I think I may have lost my virginity at fifteen. How cool of a name is that? Sorry. <laughs> Finn Wol- Wolfhard. <laughs> I don't think it is. It's like. Do you woof? Yo, I woof hard. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't. I mean, that's the best answer possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, I I remember last season when we were all so happy that when Mike and Eleven f- did their first kiss, and mm-hmm. the way that they filmed it was very respectful and cute. Like, oh, these are cute kids. Yeah, like a little that, peck. It was like yeah. a little peck, and I was like, oh, that was adorable. And then this. This now episode like was like, <laughs> like yeah. whoa, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> and I don't like that. Elle, Elle's like a very naive, innocent person. Like she doesn't have a lot of experience because she doesn't have a lot of her memories, right? Like so in her mind, like what she's now like three years old type thing, right? Am I wrong? Well, no, I don't think, I don't think mentally she's three. No, 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 I just no, think no, like I'm she not, doesn't I'm have I'm not a... saying that. So let me finish. But sure. I'm, I'm doubled. I'm clarifying because I can't remember if she has memories back or not but um, what I'm saying is is it's just it's just now you made me lose my thought because you think it's rapey me. because of her no, upbringing no that's not what I'm saying I'm, I'm saying that she's like this like fiery independent and that's how mm-hmm. they like framed her as in the last two seasons and like her clinging on to what's his face Mike and that one yeah Mike in the one scene and then like them being really kissy and just being I, but I get it they're like teenagers and that's right. what they do but it's mm-hmm. also like ugh, ugh. I got super John Hughes vibes from it I loved it 
Um, I, I just thought it was uh, like, especially when like they stop kissing and they're singing and stuff. Like I don't know. I thought I thought it was really. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's uh, like what Sam alluded to them. Their age is why the the love quote unquote blossoms that way. Now I'm jaded. I'm older, right? So I know that they're not going to last. Yeah, right. Gross. Like they're not going to last. I, I, they're not going to end up married. But this dozen. part, this point in life's Dab important to them. I love watching that scene <laughs> now. Um, being 31, almost 32. Yeah. Because when I was younger, I would probably watch that scene like, oh, yeah, they're together. Hooray. But like watching the scene, I'm very much Hopper. Like, what are they doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> they're three foot, well, three foot roll. Is that what he said? Three, three inches. Three, three inches. inches. <laughs> well, that's the door. How oh, that's the door. Yeah. Three inches. I thought okay. that too. Like he was like, you have to keep that far apart. And he was like, keep it at three inches, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> keep it at three inches. <laughs> <laughs> it grows. If your wolf gets a little bit harder, you're fucking out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Anyway, but the way the way that you feel uncomfortable in the scene uh, that actually works even better because it makes you uh, identify a little bit more with Hopper during that scene where he's. That's like, true. That's true. I just was like, I don't know. But I did notice immediately how much Eleven has grown. Not just the hair, but she seems much more like a normal girl. I know. Because like, like in season All one, she can't even. She can older. hardly talk. And she's like, friends don't lie. And then, and then in season two, she's like Gone. learning. <laughs> she's learning to read and shit, right? And then now she's she read like, that one book using good English. <laughs> <laughs> now she's fine. She's been listening to Brian Adams, yeah. so she's good now. Uh, anyway, so we got Angry Dad Hop, which was awesome. Uh, David Harbour has aged a bit, don't you think? Yeah, I think he I mean, looks older, He's always been like a Xanax popping out, of, popping out of shape, smoking cop, but it's like, holy shit, the I mustache he was, is huge. I thought he was much more, he was much more Winona Ryder in this episode than he's ever been. Like in terms of like Hopper was very manic this episode, whereas Joyce mm-hmm. is usually the one that's like, I'm kind of crazy and I'm right. fidgeting and that oh, was boy. Hopper this whole time. Yeah. I think um, uh, Hellboy has him unhinged. You know, those box office numbers. <laughs> that's my guess. He just All looked right. at the box office numbers before they rolled. <laughs> <laughs> we also got like super buff for that. And then it looks like he had to gain like 50 pounds back for this role. Unless I don't know when. Which uh, was his found. arms looked huge when he's trying to get like when 11 slams the door. Yeah. I was just I was thinking like Dude, Hellboy is going to break that shit. Down. <laughs> Look at those arms. Those are pythons. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to the mall. We get uh, Lucas in some sick ass George. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, everybody's rocking them, but Lucas's are the best. And uh, and we get to see Lucas's little sister, who now strangely looks older than Lucas. Did anyone else get that she weird had, vibe? Oh, I, was that his sister? Yeah, that was his little sister. Oh. I thought his sister was like three last season, or like really young, and now she looks like she's twelve. Well, she at was least. like eight, but yeah, now she looks older than them. Like she's driving yeah. up, like. Burp, burp, fuck I you. mean, that's the same actress. <laughs> yeah, it is. It hundred percent is. That yeah. scene makes way more sense but now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> some random chick. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> yeah. I wish you die. I'm like, oh man. No. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is, is why we should have rewatched the season. <laughs> uh, it was good to see her. I didn't think we would see her so soon because her uh, last season she was she wasn't in very much, but all of her scenes were really funny. Just because mm-hmm. how she just antagonized Lucas, and it was perfect. Yeah, I think this episode did a, a really good dro- job of, of reintroducing us into the universe and establishing some stakes right off the bat that seem and character believable dynamics. and yeah, character dynamics and 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 believable and. Like, I don't have... It was very hard to pick chocolate puddings for this episode because nothing, mm-hmm. like, stood out, but it was a great, mm-hmm. like, reestablishment of the universe because mm-hmm. um, there's a lot to do. So then the crew, they're, they're going to see uh, Day of the Dead, a Ramiro film, a little zombie movie. The power shuts down across the whole city because some sort of, you know, malevolent force seems to be, like, using magnetic fields and, and electrical power to, like, form itself in this dimension i mean that's what i got yeah I, we don't really know i what said it all there. confidently but i think that appears to be what's going on you know exploding rats like you do um <laughs> every small town has them and then will's spidey sense begins tingling like little hairs on the back of his neck yeah. <laughs> a willy sense his, his sense. <laughs> what do you this, guys think about go ahead steve because i'm gonna say i'm gonna go on just a rant real on. quick aside the scene had an anachronism and it, it bothered me. Okay, okay, let's go. When they're in the movie theater, that movie theater had stadium style seating. No theater in the 80s had stadium fucking style seating. That's that true. shit didn't come around until like the late 90s minimum. Yeah, yes. I think I thought about that too. I thought about as that some, too. As people, Sam and I, who worked in movie theaters for like a decade, I remember when stadium style seatings were made. Yeah. Slope. 
It was, yeah, it was a seating. slope. And if you, like, if someone tall sat in front of you, you were, you were fucked. fucked. Yeah. Yep. I remember seeing the Lost World Jurassic Park with a woman who was short, but she had a beehive <laughs> hairdo. And I couldn't, I had to, like, lean to the side, like, what? Did you whoop her ass, Steve? No. <laughs> you should have sent Carol after her. Carol would have whipped her ass. Oh, mm. Carol. No, that's my mom. So, <laughs> so what, I hope, you know, it's a little early to judge, but, and I know what else do you do, right? But it bothers me that they're never able to do anything with Will's character, except this like damaged, fucked up kid who's connected to the upside down. So like episode one, the first thing I get is like Will seemingly okay. And then like his spidey sense tingling and flashbacks of all the shit that happened mm-hmm. to him. And he can already sense that the creature is forming and it's like. God damn it. Poor fucking Will. Like, he's just useless. <laughs> well, he's the only one that doesn't have a partner in crime right now, and I think that's a big part of it. He doesn't have a, a duo dynamic with anybody. You got Dustin and Steve. You got Lucas and Max. You got um, does Mike he? and Eleven. You got Hopper and Joyce. You got um, fucking Nancy and... Uh, Jaybird. Jaybird. Jaybird, yeah. Mm-hmm. Will doesn't have that. And so because I think he's that's been a, unconscious and well, fucking like molested by the other dimension the well, entire show. Will Will has his best friend, the Thessal Hydra. The <laughs> Thessal Hydra has literally been inside him, Andy. That is his. Uh, that his, is his role uh, duo. is to be the lone, isolated, creepy kid. He's like a, a gatekeeper character right now. I think that we're going to see a lot more develop. He's low key the best actor among those kids. He is, and yeah. I, I think we're going to get a lot from him this. Season. I hope so. I'm pretty excited to see it. We and it is neat. I just realized that we, they called him Zombie Boy all throughout season two. And uh, it was during the Ramiro film that the monster came back. Oh, um, yeah. I don't. I doubt that was intentional, but I'm just saying, like, it was kind of neat. That's a good pool, yeah. Mm. Good pool. Uh, Nancy has new 80s hair, right? She looks great. She Andy, look great. What, is, what is your thought on the great. hair? What is your thought on the hair? Well, on the hair? Last season when Nancy got a haircut, you had very... <laughs> you had a lot of opinions. You, you didn't. Chris asked how the hair was. You're like, it was longer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was digging the hair. Um, I, 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 it's got a little volume now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think well, she had I'm, some coloring done. Am I wrong? I'm all about the I 80s hair, right. man. I dig, I dig that shit. Jaybird, so. however, he's stuck in 1981. He's got the same <laughs> hair. Yeah. Still looks like he needs a shower. Still rocking yep. the Edward, Edward for a long look. Uh-huh. I think they both needed a shower. She needs to go back to Steve. Yeah. We so? like I Steve. Steve. Steve's the best. <laughs> Steve's awesome, but he's just not ready to settle down, I think, right? Mm. So, I like okay, Jaybird, though. The most important thing we can talk about before we run super late on time, because it's going to take at least an hour. What the fuck is up with Dustin's teeth? <laughs> he's got braces now. I he's think. got braces now, and he's missing the, the most the front of the teeth top again. Teeth, it, dude. It goes back and forth. It's fucking crazy. I don't. Under, we, we talked about that last season, I think, where they can't make up their minds whether or not he's going to have teeth. Is yeah. he? But like, is his real actor having no. teeth issues? No. I think he's. Well, he had teeth issues when he was a kid, and they they made that part of his character. Okay. And now he has teeth. And I, I don't know what he did in season two. And he had teeth in season two because he kept making that weird these purr pearly noise whites. of people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. And uh, they're just in it. I, they didn't even say anything about it in the show, in the universe. What the fuck? I, I think a big part of it is just the way that he smiles and holds his mouth. That's honestly kind of hard to tell. But I definitely thought I saw caught a glint of uh, uh, of some braces going on. in there. Oh, yeah. He had braces. He's 100 percent has braces. So I don't know. I don't. I have no Does idea. Just have one bar that goes over. Sorry, I hit the mic. One bar that goes over the over the gap in teeth in the middle. <laughs> are, is, are there teeth there, and it just I looks did, like they're it not? It looked like there was no teeth there. Right. I, I honestly think it's just like the construction of his face that it's just hard to tell. Huh. Like he's one of those weird people that smile. That's like, like a really you good. You know how the metal band <laughs> face construction. You know how there's people that smile and like they show their entire gum line. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's like the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> like no tooth line too much gum right <laughs> anyway it bothers me <laughs> that, was, that was a really good Dustin smile Andy <laughs> so Dustin's been at a science camp for about a month that's and gonna he's be camp, what I'm camp gonna nowhere. watch now what Dustin at science camp and his, no and his teeth I'm, that's what I'm gonna focus on how could you ever not remember back in season one of streaming things when I was like I don't fucking like that little weird kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and everybody was like I love Dustin I was like he creeps me out <laughs> See, so it's been a thing for me for a long time. Down. Did you guys ever go to a summer camp? No. Oh, yeah. No. I went to camp. No, Web I was a I was poor kid. Mm. I went to camp once. Of course you did. And it happened? was terrible. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. 
I hated my camp. My buddy broke his arm the first day, though. It sucked. So yeah. it was like, you go with a friend, you know what I mean? So it's like, you're doing a new thing, but you got, you know, your anchor. My anchor, like, got snipped the first day. So I'm just <laughs> so drifting. Wait, did he break I'm his arm and he had to leave? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that sucks. Yeah. So I, I didn't I didn't know anybody in camp. But, I mean, I was there for, like, uh, a week or so. I don't remember how long camp was. But, I know, I had a lot of fun. Played a lot of kickball. Earned some badges. Hmm. It's pretty sweet. Earned some badges. Yeah, dude, you do, like, uh, archery and you... Uh, your camp sounds way cooler than mine. I don't find I it believable that canoe, Dustin would go alone. Row a canoe? Like... Well, he went to a special science camp. I they're think, all science I think he, nerds. I think he would go alone um, for the science. He probably saw it was like, guys, we got to do this. And Mike's they were like, like, we're standing. Hold on, I'm making out. out with 11. Right. <laughs> and he just was like, well, you guys are nerds. I'm going to go build a super duper antenna somehow. Hmm. <laughs> Which is going to be super important to the plot of the next season. So fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we get the reunion of the kids uh, in the, another callback. It's season two, they did the toys moving from Eleven move, didn't they? That's done it before. I know she made the she Millennium did, Falcon yeah. fly. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, that he's like all sad because nobody gives a fuck he's home. Yeah, but they do. They do, Dustin. In fact, they planned a surprise for you. Um, and then he sprays Lucas in the face with his Farrah Fawcett hairspray, <laughs> <laughs> which the trailer um, ruined. I like the callback of the orange tabby cat, by the way. On the car dashboard. Twos. Oh, good call. Oh, yeah, that poor cat. Oh, yeah. I wonder what he Muse, told his mom. Muse died, but then they got the replacement cat that's not the tabby that's called Twos. Because <laughs> we were making fun of, like, they replaced their cat and named it Twos. <laughs> can, we, can we not talk about Muse dying? Because oh. it's... Awful. Cats are the worst. And I know. I, want to talk I love. About all that. I love orange tabby cats and like oh. space stuff. You got and one in alien. It's extra sad when they get eaten by a demo dog. Sam Goose. used to have a big fat tabby cat. I did. That uh, would he what died, would he do? He died as he lived. Uh, well, well, he was so overweight. Uh, fiery. <laughs> 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 he was so overweight. We had to um, make him exercise. So he. When we put him on the treadmill, he kind of just dragged himself. Oh, so, no. So, so instead, we would put a, like a, a plastic shopping bag around him, and he would like purposely wrap it around his neck. There's so, so many ways this cat can die in this story right now. <laughs> <Wait a minute. laughs> and, on the edge of my seat. And, and he would run around because he, he enjoyed the bag. Like He had fun with it. We weren't torturing him. That was the only way we could get him to run because he was so lazy. He had like a little like, cape. He had a little cape. And like so if he was like sitting on the steps and that, you would have to take your foot and nudge him down. On a step and he just rolled <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Everyone's, Everyone's, way to die. Everyone's on the edge of their seat to see how his destination is. And then he loved when we would throw knives at him. <laughs> <laughs> but sadly enough, uh, he, he died uh, in his food bowl. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> After he, all of that. <laughs> he, he literally ate himself. Oh my god. To death. I thought he was going to get crushed in the treadmill. I thought he was going to suffocate with the bag. <laughs> I thought he was going to break his neck, fall down the stairs. But no, it was cancer. No, this cat, like... It reminds me of... I was watching The Hangover last night, and when he says, oh, it's just like my grandma. I've been so sad since my grandpa died. And he's like, oh, how'd your grandpa die? He said World War II. He's like, oh, he was in the war. No, it was, he was skiing. It was just during World War II. <laughs> No, I mean, he was, I mean, and he couldn't get to the counter like the other cats can, so he would have to, like, climb on different things because he was so fat. But one day we walked downstairs and he ate a whole pie, my dad, ate <laughs> for Christmas. Shit. Um, Yeah, I missed that cat. You owned he, Garfield, didn't you? He was, he was Garfield. <laughs> it was a lasagna. Did, did this cat hate Mondays? <laughs> he just, no, he just hated moving. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> but sadly, yes, he passed. But he, he lived a very happy Food filled life. Yeah, yeah, it sounds miserable. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so then we, we cut to the uh, the eighties pool, and Billy is rocking himself not just a mustache, a little but stubble stash. Did I detect a soul patch? Ugh. I only caught the stubble stash. I, I did not catch a soul the soul patch. patch. I'll uh, have to look next time. You can't miss the soul patch. Did he have a tat? I thought I saw a tat. He did. He a little, little shitty tattoo. <laughs> which is He's dope. a hard ass. Yeah. Well, I mean, back then. In the uh, 80s? Sure, I don't feel yeah. like tattoos were very sanitary or common back then. So just, uh, you know, motorcycle gangs and, and convicts and Billy. And he is the he is the the show that all the local moms go to the pool to watch. Isn't this okay? Speaking of sexism, Sam, you think <laughs> two kids making out is super creepy? And they're fifteen, by the way. I mean, whatever. Britney Spears was fifteen when she came out. Anyway, so <laughs> now a bunch of older women 
and a young boy. Well, high school kid. Literally, they're all thinking about it's different ways to. Well, I, he I, just graduated. He's he just graduated. 18 yeah. tops. And they're all thinking about different ways to slurp up Billy. <laughs> but yeah, that's not creepy. What about that? That was actually one of my favorite scenes. I was like, get it, girl. <laughs> See? <laughs> Go He's, for it. He could be Your 17. Your husband's a slob. You need a good ride. Hey, you know, <laughs> when, you are, when you live in a Midwestern town like Hawkins, there's not mm-hmm. much to do. You can't really go hang out at the mall. All the kids are going to bother you. you have, you're have you sitting on the side of the pool. You got to take you gotta, you gotta take these uh, these gifts that life throws your way. Yeah. I'm just going to read my up. sex book and stare at this, this kid. I just love how they like kept up with the the, the theme that Karen reads trashy oh, romance yeah. novels, oh, yeah. yes. and like the men on the cover look like Billy. Is that the what you laughed at when that when the camera was yeah, pushing when it, in when there? it panned okay. on Karen and it had her trashy novel? I started laughing. That's why I laughed because it's like, yeah, there's Karen. Where's fuck? I was looking for Ted that whole time. Where the fuck is Ted? I pictured him with like a bunch of sunblock covering his nose. Right. Get he it, had Karen. That, no running. He's he in the that, concession stand line. He had that fishing <laughs> hat, sunblock on the nose, like like real thick glasses. But no, even more true to Ted. He's not even there. Yep. He's at home. So then we cut to uh, Hop talking to Joyce about how much he hates that Mike and Eleven are dating. He's a jealous father. She's trying to teach him about how to talk to teenagers, uh, which I think is, you know, very 2019 and not 80s at all. Go Joyce for being so forward thinking about Mm -hmm. how to talk to kids. Right. Uh, He asks what a heart to heart is, which is uh, a little on the nose, but hilarious Hop moment. Yeah. Um, What is feelings? (laughs) Then we cut to uh, Nancy at her new job. Um, so, you know, we, her and Jay Bird have been banging. Apparently it's okay for her to sleep over because they're old enough to do that, right? Well, Nancy hopped out of, the out of the window. She yeah. was hiding from Joyce. She did still Joyce. climb out of the window, but he had lipstick on his cheek. Joyce knows. Will oh, said yeah. gross. And so Joyce knew what she was talking about. He yeah. was talking about immediately and was like, it's cool. You're going to want to fuck stuff eventually. Like <laughs> well, so. you said, Joyce is living in the future. She's right. Good. She's very forward thinking. She's been you through a lot. You can't hide anything from Joyce. There has literally been monsters in those walls. You don't think she, she knows what's going on just beyond them? No. <laughs> 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 That's right. That's all right. So apparently they, Jonathan and Nancy both work at the local newspaper. Hawkins Post. Uh, there's a lot of sexism still in this 80s. Uh, not, I mean, there is still today, but definitely a lot more Yeah, in this 80s workplace. So they're not treating Nancy with much respect. She's just getting them sandwiches and stuff. But Jay Bird's a highly respected writer. Right? I would, I would definitely uh, spit in that sandwich with some mustard. Yeah. that guy, And that, that was the guy from spit. Starship Troopers. I just want to point that out. Uh, yeah, dude. That's, I was trying to place him. That's mm-hmm. a beauty. Mm-hmm. We, we, we did the research while you're outside. That's Gary, Gary Busey's, Busey's son. Oh, okay. I actually jokingly told Steve, I think it's either Busey or Nolte's son, or I always just made fun of him and said that, and I don't remember if it's true or not anymore. <laughs> and it was. It's a Busey. When the camera first panned on him, I my immediate thought, for whatever reason, he stuck out like a sore thumb in that group. I think it was because it, it's hair. hair. Yeah. And I immediately thought, like, wow, it's like if, if Boris Johnson and Owen Wilson fucked, then you had <laughs> that. <laughs> Just awful hair. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> my condiments are missing in my sandwich, Nancy. Wow. <laughs> so then we cut to uh, finding out what Dustin's been doing all along at camp, which uh, apparently he's been making sex toys. <laughs> the slammer. This is the slam <laughs> That was super <laughs> awkward for me. What is that for? I had a uh, toy board game thing when I was a kid. It you was had like a you, slammer? Yeah. Well, you, you, yes, pretty much. Oh, pogs? You, you build up a little wall that's flat, and then you stand it up, and it's almost like Jenga, except it's with a little sex toy, a little pocket rocket that you, you take turns. You spin a little dial, and I can't remember what it's called, and it tells you which kind of block you need to knock out, and you need to <gasps> knock out the blocks without knocking over the wall. I remember that game. Oh, what was that called? I don't I'm know. not going to look <laughs> but and mom stole that piece from the board game everywhere back then. Right? <laughs> I used to love that game when I was a kid. It was fun. Mom, where's my slammer? Where's my slammer? <laughs> it's in my nightstand. Mom, mom's busy. <laughs> mom's playing Jenga by herself again. <laughs> um, anyway. So we cut to... So oh, we did kind of glean over something important in yeah. the Hawkins Post scene. It's made it's made clear that the, the mall is destroying the, the small hometown economy that is Hawkins like Nancy, malls do Nancy suggested the story they made fun of her but it also you know er, in an earlier scene with uh, Joyce and Hopper we saw that no one was in Donald's store and you know this that's why it's because of the mall the right. mall is sucking up mm-hmm. the, the mama pops so Joyce still works at Donald's right yeah I think that's 
It's not called Donald's, but that's the same it store. It looked like a pharmacy to me or something for some reason, but I guess they didn't have like a Walgreens it's just yet. a general store. Yeah. That was one question I had about that store. If Joyce is the only employee there right now, does she fill prescriptions? Because mm-hmm. we shouldn't allow that. Is Joyce filling prescriptions? <laughs> it's the 80s, all loosey-goosey. That's true. We didn't have a lot of pill problems yet. Is Joyce filling prescriptions? Steve is working at the ice cream shop. Uh, with Chips Ahoy or some Scoops shit? Ahoy. Scoops Ahoy. Scoops Ahoy. Scoops Ahoy. In the mall. Poor Steve. I know. Um, I don't think that's what Steve deserves. Exactly. And apparently he's lost his game completely. Oh, what's up with this thread? He's having an identity crisis, man. Everybody else is Moving out on. of school and successful and he's... Wearing a horrible outfit. <laughs> not doing him justice at all. Steve's got no... I like how... I know is, what I'm dressing up as Halloween now. This is, <laughs> this is very 80s, I guess, too. But it's like... He's trying so hard to like hit on all these girls and like completely ignoring the very attractive girl he works with, who's just like his bro friend. You know, right. what I mean? like movies well, do that shit. That's a lot. gonna have that that romance happen. Is he gonna the have the, the John season, Hughes? She sure. cleans herself up and looks the same, and yeah. he's like, oh, she puts on glasses just so she can take them off. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You got hot. Um, anyway, oh, wow. so what, what is? It? Oh, he makes three dollars an hour. I thought I would. Uh, Point out the little inflation throwback there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did he, he said something where he couldn't get into a college. So his even the technical college, even the technical college. Right. So his dad is quote unquote punishing him by making him work this particular job. Yeah, because remember he oh like you're gonna have to do this for the rest of your life. If yeah, because you smarter last last season I forget what it was exactly, but Steve's dad has some sort of company that he was planning on working at right while waiting for Nancy to graduate. Yeah, and that clearly isn't scoops ahoy. So it sounds like his dad's like you could work at my company and make a living, but no, son, you suck. <laughs> Go work at scoops ahoy. Which I don't get, because why would you punish a kid for trying to get into various colleges and not being... It's not like he decided not to go to college. He's like, yeah. Dad, I'm stupid. Like, I'm your son. It's your fault, probably, right? Your, <laughs> your, your ball juice made this brain. <laughs> Give me a job. I got to say, though, 20 years later, uh, fucking minimum wage didn't go up that much. I only made five ten an hour, I think, when Almost I... Almost 40 years job. later now. But yeah. Well, I'm talking about, like... When you had it. Yeah, okay. Oh, three, yeah. oh, two. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> what was it then? Pretty low. What are you saying? Minimum wage was uh, five fifteen. Five oh, fifty is what it was. I thought when it, we were kids. My first job, I know I made five fifteen. Hundred percent. Damn. Yeah. I'm just saying. Two. Twenty years later. Two dollars. I, I, I just don't understand why Steve is uh, working at an ice cream shop when everyone knows he's the greatest babysitter of all time. Orange Julius was right next door. (laughs) (laughs) Was Auntie Anne's the pretzel place? Is that what it's called? Yes. Oh, I love Auntie Anne. I I love when the kids come to sneak into the movie theater. They go into Scoops Ahoy first and Robin's like, Steve, your children are here. (laughs) Because Steve's the best mom ever. (laughs) He's Mr. Mom. Put a bunch of nails in a baseball bat and have a good time. You know, like we do, kids. Um, Cut back to Hopper doing more... talking practice, talking to people practice with Joyce. Uh, she's very helpful. Um, he wants to go on a date with Joyce, but she's just not ready to move past Bob. Mm. Um, and it's very sad to watch. And I, I think it's Love cool because it. I was always in a, I was always, you know, what's it called? Shipping. Yeah. I was always shipping Joyce and Hop. But now I feel like it's a betrayal to Bob to even want that. Right? Yeah. No. So they've made it very painful. Andy, you got to be loyal to your, your ship. Gotta be <laughs> the Bob was such trust a the shit, guy. bro. I mean, Bob newbie superhero. Yeah, but then he got eaten, so we're good. See, this was this. So last season, I remember I I talked about this at great length, where there was they could have very easily killed off Bob and immediately put Joyce and Hopper back t- together, and I and that would have made me so angry. And even now, I'm still like, yes, let the poor woman grieve mm-hmm. this yeah. guy that she clearly liked a lot, maybe even loved, and he died helping her and her kids out. And so, like, I want them to eventually get together. Yeah, but they're making it very realistic, like yeah. an actual normal time of grieving. Like, it could have easily just been making out at the end of season two, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and in fact, there's a beautiful scene since I rewatched it recently where right after Bob dies, everybody's in the house trying to figure out what to do. And Hopper just sits in the room with Joyce and doesn't touch her, doesn't say anything, but he wants to, like, be near. And she's got, like, the little blanket around her. This is, like, right after Bob dies. Hmm. I don't know, just they've always been very um, in tune with like what it's like, you know, cause there's no actual words when something like that happens. Right. So they don't do the movie trope shit of like the big speech or whatever. And it's just neat. It's cool. Way to go. 
Bob was a hero, damn it. He fucking was, man. And you can honor his memory. He founded the AV Club, Sam, and you're just yeah. so quick to throw him away. I he, know, I'm just saying, he's dead now. You saw so. the drawing, Bob Newby superhero. Yeah, and that drawing like, fell on the floor twice. The, Time to move on. The <laughs> corpse is still warm, Sam. <laughs> is it? I think no, it's like it's been not, digested no, and... Digested? <laughs> moved on. So then we, uh, definitely they ate the whole thing. So we cut to hiking up to talk to Susie. Did you guys get the sense that Susie wasn't even real at all? Right off the bat. I was yeah. like, Susie ain't real. But I think she must be now. I mean, Dustin's not that much of a hand bone, right? Her, her name was in the title of the episode. She has to be real, right? Yeah. Eh? I think maybe at some point it'll be a reveal. And I hope she is as hot as Phoebe Cates when she reveals herself. <laughs> Who's Phoebe Cates? <laughs> That's the, from Fast Times. The Fast Times getting original. out of the pool oh, scene her. from the 80s. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Which, yeah. And she's also in uh, Drop Dead Fred, right? Yes. That's the same girl. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, I, I, think, I think Dustin's telling the truth. At least when everyone was like, Dustin's lying and got all pissy about it, I felt like, well, that wasn't earned. That's well, kind of harsh. The characters <laughs> accused him of lying. I figured he probably is not, right? But right. I thought at first, like, I don't know if there's actually a girl. He in might Utah. be exaggerating the relationship. You know, yeah. it's like a girl. Like she's he, Mormon. He told her what time it was, and now it's his girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, everyone knows Mormons don't believe in science. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see more 11. Like, I don't know. Sand Mike's face. Yes. <laughs> Mike is such a douche. He's such a little I douche. Wanted okay, to we punch gotta him. talk about this because she's brought it up twice. Sorry. I, I, no, I just, no, no. You're right. I put at the very bottom of my notes, I don't like Mike, and it's a problem because he's like almost the main character in a weird way, right? I don't like him. He, yeah. He's something about him super douchey. I, when he taught, when he like started whispering and laughing at Hopper after he'd been practicing all day. I was like, oh, you little motherfucker. And then satisfyingly, Hopper was like, all right, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Your you grandma's want, dead. You want to play fucking... <laughs> Nana's gone. You want to play hardball. Yeah. Get in the fucking truck. And I was like, good. Good. Like, what the fuck, well, Mike? You're supposed to be douchey, though. I mean, you think you knew when you were 14 or 15 yeah, or whatever. Absolutely. We no, douchebags. none of the other boys are like that. It's Mike true, has been a bad friend. He was only cared about 11. Exactly. And, That's and, the and, problem I'm having. All through season two, he was grieving 11. And so he was such a, a fucking miserable douche. fuck right. last season. Seasons, which is, I get it. Now, season three, he's getting fucking hand jobs all the time. And all his <laughs> friends are back together. And he's still an asshole. And he talks to adults that way. No, sir. Bitch slap in the face. Yeah. Yeah. We're old. We are old. say that. I'm sure, I'm sure if we were like, way. if we were closer in age to family, we'd be like, yeah, Hopper's a dork. <laughs> he's a butt face. Yeah. Why can't I make out all the time? Mm-mm. So Adult. <laughs> we get we could just blow through a lot of this other stuff, right? So uh, poor Will is what I put because again he's just the fucking um, molested by the other dimension kid. This is all he's ever going to be apparently. Um, then we cut to exploding rats. Mm. Interesting. It's like the sequel. That makes you want to binge the next episode, right? <laughs> Greatest Why? extermination technique ever. Why right. are the rats exploding? <laughs> So is this some kind of monster? So I, here's my prediction. There's other animals in those woods. The Thessal Hydra, which for listeners, <laughs> that's what we call the, the Mind Flayer because that's what it should have been called yeah. to track with the naming of the Demogorgon, God damn it! So the Thessal Hydra is like forming without a gate in our dimension with like body parts well, and shit well, from remember, other people. Remember, oh. he, he went into Will. In season two, and, and then, then, and then they exercised it, and right. it just like flew into space, and it we were did. making fun of it just flying into space at yes. the end of the last season. So it's still here. Yeah, but going back to the rats, I think it's interesting because rats are known to run away from danger or when something like storms bad's happening. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but it's not storms. Are we gonna get like a but pickle rick? towards that's it. Why He's like mm-hmm. calling. So that's what I loved. We'll just we're gonna jump around a second here. The I loved the economy of at the beginning. When Joyce says, what's that shit doing there? And she picks up all the magnets and the drawing of Bob Newby. And I thought it was just like something normal that was a way to, for her to look at the drawing and call attention to it with the camera. And then when this drawing falls a second time later, it's something, whatever the Thessal Hydra is doing is fucking with the magnetic fields in the town and the electricity. So it's causing the magnets to fall. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't in the fridge? 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was awesome. Like it serves both purposes really well, right? Like, oh yeah, Bob. And then it's like, oh shit, that's what's going on. It's why it fell because the magnet. So I thought that was neat. I like, I, to think ima- I like to imagine it's just messing with that fridge, like fuck, fuck newbie. Like it's, a, <laughs> it's like a personal vendetta against Bob newbie. Like you got eaten. <laughs> <laughs> you don't deserve to be on the fridge. <laughs> Will drew a better drawing of me. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, there is a drawing. Of it. Yeah. yeah. Put that on the fucking fridge. <laughs> And I also, I don't know how rats work, but I know that, that ants, <laughs> how do rats work? <laughs> I know that ants communicate and are like basically retards, you know what I mean? And they just get told to move places Yeah. so that if you messed with the magnetic field that it might disrupt the ants, that's why they're coming. So I don't know, do rats have some kind of like group think? I don't know, Feature but I, I know rats to their biology. typically like instinctually. But run what away I mean is, things. if they're being like told by something, maybe. Right? But I also, what if they're not being told and they're running towards something? That's, see, that's not the vibe I got. I thought I that they know. were unwillingly being pulled there and then exploded. Oh, it's was, like the was, opening to uh, that terrible Aaron Eckhart disaster movie, The Core. Remember that when like all the all the uh, magnetic fields are fucking up and all the people with pacemaker die, pacemakers die, and the birds start flying and shit. Mm. It's like Ooh. that only with rats. Birds. Also, the rats exploding looked like jelly donuts. Yeah. The rat goo looked awful. I got hungry. Yeah, I'll be honest. I got a little hungry. <laughs> Is that a, so? That was a match <laughs> cut, right? With the last exploding rat became the yeah. splash in the pool. I love that edit. I, that was a very good edit. I audibly laughed because I thought it was great. You get that like like the little pop of the rat, but then it's like immediately a splash in the pool, and Karen's <laughs> Karen's <laughs> getting it. That doing backstroke. that backstroke, right? So then we cut to uh, Billy. Googling hard. Googling is what I meant. <laughs> Googling. G- Googling is what I, I said. I remember when I was young and I would just Google people. <laughs> <laughs> You're Googlers, bro. No, I meant ogling. Uh, Mike's mom, right? Karen. And I put Stacy's mom in the notes because ironically, Andy and I were jamming to Stacy's mom on the way here. <laughs> Stacy's oh, yeah. mom. Got it going, going on. on. Which is apparently a banger that we forgot about. That's a really good song. Yeah, it's <laughs> a total banger. Bowling for soup, right? And I'm not a fan of infidelity. Uh, Fountain Wayne. Oh, Fountain Wayne. I hate Ted so much that I really wanted Karen to fuck Billy. Okay, I don't yes. know why. I am. I'm not. Also, infidelity is like a hard no. But I mean, if you don't like the person, grow balls. Say no. I want to fuck somebody else. Peace out. But Ted is such a slob and a nobody. I'm like, get it, girl. Oh what? No, he was laying there holding the baby. Holly. Okay. Okay. Fuck that scene. In particular, because she looks at Ted, and Ted, up until this point, has not interacted with his children once, other than to say language. And then, of course, the one time that Karen's about to throw down in the bone zone, she looks at Ted, and baby Holly had a drunken stupor and fell into his lap. <laughs> she passed out, wasted. On she drank Ted. way too much milk. And Ted, she probably f- just f- passed out in his lap, and Ted was too goddamn wasted. Like, honey, it's on me. <laughs> honey. <laughs> Uh, I can make it work. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> and, like that, because that scene was 100% meant to make you feel like, oh no, Karen's making a bad choice for her family. No, she's but not. Fuck Ted. No, she's not. Yeah. He might actually be a good guy, and now she's just seeing the, the good. Oh, he really there does love no one there. of our children. <laughs> <laughs> he was already asleep when she went to, she went to, she fell asleep trying to emotionally reach him. That's yeah. what happened. <laughs> Gave up. Um, that's the, the only out. time she's allowed to touch her dad is to be sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Also, Lucas <laughs> heading the way of Ted. He is a fucking textbook awful boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't Lucas, know, he spit Lucas back in the water, man. He drank all the water without thinking about his girl. He comes out of his fucking eyeball stupor of pain just to say, "Is that a new zit?" Like, <laughs> they're, he's horrible with women, like in a way that's. Two on the nose. Like, he can't be that. You could accidentally be a better boyfriend than that. Right. He's just going to punch her in the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the only thing he could do that's worse. He is with the perfect person for him, though, because Max seems to be... She's got very thick skin. She has very thick skin, but also she seems very entertained by how stupid he is. Yeah. yeah. Like, she She's enjoys very secure. it. Yeah. She knows how awesome she is. Which is good. Have it's you the- seen her skateboard? She's a Zoomer. She's Guys. a Zoomer. Uh, we cut to Lonely Joyce eating uh, some lasagna where she, you know, watching Cheers like she used to with old uh, Bobby. That was so sad. Um, and then the magnetic <laughs> gravitational field callback with the thing. I don't. Why did I write rat story? 
<laughs> rats? <laughs> like Toy Story? Oh, 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 because um, Nancy gets a phone call at the oh, post yeah. and writes diseased rats really large oh, on okay. a notepad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually really good about my notes if I look down and say, rat story. It's like Toy Story, but with rats. <laughs> oh, like, uh, what's the movie? Ratatouille. Um, Ratatouille. Oh. That's um, so weird. And then, oh my God, my notes started getting really bad. Yeah. She uses her. Oh, yeah. Eleven's always. I like how they do this. They because that's what I would do if I had psionic powers. I would just be like, "Oh fuck, the TV remote's four inches away," or like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that last slice of pizza Andy's going for. Yep. It's in my mouth. <laughs> and so Eleven's just always like, instead of reaching over an inch, will just shut the door with her head or something. Like, like I would totally do that oh, for sure. I'd be going definitely. to piss late at night. Just Turn. pee the bed and zoom in into the toilet. <laughs> no, that's badass though. I'm just picturing myself tired walking in the bathroom, lifting the toilet seat with my head, <laughs> just <laughs> dropping my pants with my head pushed down. And, you know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Right? Because you can. You can. So you I can just want, bleed out. I just <laughs> to <point> that out. <laughs> so then we cut back to lonely Dustin. Everyone else has forsaken him in his attempts to reach Susie, and Cerebro picks up Russia. So not just Russia. Utah, but he overshot the mark and went to Russia. Um, Silver Fox. And he's got some kind of, yeah, like uh, Awakening the Winter Soldier speech going right. on, right? Mm-hmm. Sil- Silver Fox. Silver Fox. That's the only thing I wrote down in my notes. Like, I don't know what else he was saying. He was like, it is a like, good day to walk by beach on Silver Fox. <laughs> <laughs> he's just having a, he doesn't even work there. He's just like, get the fucking homeless guy away from the radio. He says weird shit. <laughs> Who let Borders back on there? Get him off. <laughs> That's just like a morning show. It's the Howard Stern of Russia. <laughs> Deal with folks. Anyway, uh, go back to the... T- <laughs> Wait, what's, what's that guy's name that they call the Silver Fox on CNN right now? I don't know. The anchor... Fuck, I read oh, it. Oh, I know what you're Anderson, talking about. Anderson, Anderson Cooper, Cooper, yeah. They yeah. were talking about Anderson Cooper that whole time. <laughs> I think he's amazing. He is, if you looked at him, he's gorgeous. <laughs> so we cut to... I want to hold him like a baby. Fabulous. To my breast. Classic hair dryer scene. Karen's getting ready. She saw her sleeping baby and Ted and decided, I just want that dick, though. So I'm going to mm. figure this out <laughs> later. And then uh, cut to douchebag Billy talking to himself in the rearview mirror <laughs> about what he's going to do to Karen, right? Can I cut kind of Karen? I bet I can because I'm Billy. And then crashes his car into the uh, Aramborn Steelworks, where the rats have been exploding, if you haven't been paying attention. I missed it. What did he hit? You something like it. hit across so, his windshield. Gooey. Right, oh, something okay. gooey. There's okay. a rat. Caused him to wreck his uh, T-Bird or whatever the fuck, you know, car thing. Okay. I had my head, my head down taking a note right as that happened. Like, oh, what did I miss? That's why you got to keep your eyes. That's why my notes are so bad. I always keep my eyes on the screen and just scribble. <laughs> <laughs> It's like cursive print because all the letters are connected. And then I get to the rant story. Rant story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it says Nancy's hair. Oh. Uh, anyway, so then, and Billy's fucking dead, I guess? I know, Maybe. she didn't get the dick. Mm. I know. Well, she might get tentacled, like Korean style, by the th- never mind. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> Edit. <laughs> no way. That's bad. I'm, here's what's fucked up. All of you knew immediately what I meant, and so does every listener. So who's the computer. asshole here? <laughs> Fucking Evil Dead style. And Sam's, really. like, super shocked. Like, they know about that? I thought that was my thing. <laughs> yes, everyone knows about it. Uh, so, yeah. Steel, steel work, Aramborn Steelworks. I tried to find some kind of anagram or something there, but I couldn't because I, I feel like it's a lot of letters. Anagram. Einhorn. <laughs> yeah, Finkel. Ace Ventura. Finkel. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I guess Billy's dead is what we're going to end on. We're going to find out, obviously, but if he's not dead, I'll be pissed, but I'm kind of sad at the same time. Or mm. he'll be possessed. Mm. Oh, that's way more like anticlimactic 80s horror that, you know what I mean? Right. Like you see the guy gets sucked away and then he comes back and, and he just then got he like a the bad flash guy. in his eyes. Right. And, yeah. yeah, I guess it could be villain Billy, Billy, Billy. Billy. We're gonna call Billy him Billy. Billy. Oh, 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 <laughs> Billy McVilly. I tried to do exactly what you just said, but I just said Billy. <laughs> I tried to say Billy like you guys. I'm like Billy. <laughs> <laughs> B's and V's are hard. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, yeah, so now we have a segment called Easter Egos, where each of us try to find something reminiscent of the 80s or some kind of 80s property, and we point those out. A lot of them are super fucking obvious, and we get really pissed when someone else mentions one of ours. A lot of them are the same things from yes. prior seasons. So we take turns. Sam 
Don't go first because you're newer here and I don't want to put you in an awkward spot. Andy. Um, when Hop was watching TV and leans back in his lazy boy to look in on uh, Mike and Eleven, I believe he was watching Dukes of Hazard. I think you're wrong. He was, there, that was, that was, he was watching a Tom Selleck thing. That was Magnum P.I., I believe. Oh, was it? Yeah. I thought I saw the General Lee. The orange No, that was car. definitely, um, no, it wasn't, it, God, we're all idiots. That was, uh, what's his fucking name? Burt Reynolds, wasn't it? Oh. I thought it was Tom Selleck. I thought it was Burt Reynolds. What do you think, Sam? I don't know. I looked away at that scene. I'm going with <laughs> Magnum P.I. It was one of those three things. It was friends. <laughs> okay. Someone with a mustache and a car. I, I could have sworn it was the orange car. I, You're not going to be able to Google it. It just happened yeah. today at 3 a.m. for the first yeah. time, right? Or actually, there's probably an article up. All right. Uh, Steve, go. Uh, let me see here. Well, in, I guess in, in that same scene, um, right before Hop catches him, there's some cassettes on the mm-hmm. on the, mm-hmm. on the the table. We got Steve's a Brian music guy. cassette. And you had a Corey Hart cassette. Corey Hart was actually playing the song. He had put Never that Surrender. cassette in. Mm-hmm. Um, I got, I don't know why I wrote that. God, my notes suck. Busey. We got the Busey kid. The Buse. Um, the Buse man. I got a bunch of obvious shit. Uh, Day yeah. of the Dead, obvious, right? I wrote Orange Julius. <laughs> yes. That was a thing in the. So oh, Star Wars my, reference. Gold Leader. Dustin yeah. says Gold Leader in the car on the way there. So my brother did go to the uh, mall a lot when we were kids, and he was, well, he was older than me. He was right. nine years old. And I, my mom was the one that was like, take your little brother. So I did get to go to the uh, mall when it was at like the busy times and stuff. Don't take my thing. And, <laughs> I, that, that, that was my thing. I oh. was like, I really enjoyed the 80s. I just enjoyed the whole 80s scene mall. Of the mall. Okay, now yeah. I said what, my thing. What so. did you like okay. about the mall? <laughs> Name some of the stores. There were, no, there were quite a few. Well, uh, not even the stores, just the aesthetic of it, but the 80s stupid garden mm-hmm. sitting around area that you hang out in, and everyone's just like hanging out in groups and packs of people. The movies, and then there's the eating, and it's just the that's where you hang out, the food court. And you don't, all, you don't have that anymore. Mm. But I, I remember... Like in the early 90s, going to the mall and it was exciting because it was food court and there's all these things you can do. And now you go and you're like, why am I here? <laughs> I remember the uh, the mall by my house growing up had like a very, like they had the garden, the gardens, but it was like 50% garden, 50% fountains mm-hmm. that had like the black um Bottom, so the water looked black, but there was like water shooting out. A bunch it, of coins, a bunch of coins in I there. We were taking the I didn't mean to cut of off it. your story. I was just like, <laughs> oh, no, no, don't you're say good. my th- 80s thing. And it was like my and my sister actually. I think for her senior prank, her and a bunch of people threw uh, detergent into the the mall fountains and caused them to bubble up and That's awesome. overflow. I, thousands of dollars of damage. <laughs> well, yeah, no, they didn't. They didn't catch them. Uh, <laughs> and they don't have those fountains in there anymore. They take <laughs> those the out a long time ago. Uh, well, I was just the only two that stuck out to me because you got to see their old logos were the Gap and J.C. Penny. Oh yeah, J.C. Penny was there, wasn't it? Oh. There's a sale at Penny's. <laughs> that was the thing. Uh, Steve, um, this is the one that like kind of drove me nuts. But the the scene with Billy at the pool um, and the and the and the older women ogling him that's almost like a direct recreation of the scene from Fast Times at Ridgemont High with Phoebe Cates mm-hmm. set to the cars moving in stereo. Um, it was a clear just throwback to that. It also reminded scene. me of that whole pool area. It reminded me of Sandlot, which might have been early 90s. I don't, yeah. know, and I don't think it was meant to be I got at some all, but serious, it just did for me. Uh, radio flyer vibes during um, the part where they were With putting, together, uh, putting yeah. together the uh, Cerebro, which is my next Easter egg. That's uh, um, what's his name's uh, the X Men guy. Professor X is Professor like X Xavier. Thing. Yeah, Xavier. The X Men thing. What's the guy's name? <laughs> Professor X. <laughs> um, you know, Picard. <laughs> Picard. Picard. Uh, they mentioned Phoebe Cates. I'll just throw that in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, fuck it. We always do this. Eventually, we start going willy nilly. Right. Uh, Foreigner. I saw. I heard a Foreigner song. Yeah. You yeah. did hear a Foreigner song. That was Hot Blooded. Hot Blooded. Go. I also saw Ted Danson. Sorry. I saw. Uh, and Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Jo- Joyce uh, was, when she was working in the store, I saw Pro Yo's, which was the little prepackaged yo yo's that you could get out of the toy Ooh, aisle. I never, there's, I there's a ton of stuff in the store. Like, I remember oh, yeah. Ajax was a thing. Mm-hmm. I think that, that doesn't R2D exist anymore. R2D2 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 toy. I saw a closed down Radio Shack, which is not only. That was brilliant, dude. Yes. Right next right. door. Yeah. An allusion to old Radio Shack, but also how they look today. Yeah. <laughs> Radio Shack space for lease, right? <laughs> <laughs> and also, Bob Newby's dead, so Radio Shack yes. also dead. No. Mm-hmm. no. Oh. <laughs> uh, Fair faucet on the can of hairspray. Ah. The uh, 
little tape deck radio that Eleven had in her room that was orange, I think, in that. Sure. My, my sister, um, who is uh, my four, sister. 14 years my senior, had that exact same one, only hers was white. But I think we still have it. Like that same tape deck thing. Was it Amy's? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I was like, Allison's not that old. No. no. <laughs> I was going to kill myself. <laughs> Allison's 45? <laughs> uh, damn. Okay. Uh, did I hear, was that Stevie Ray Vaughan or was it ZZ Top or was it neither? Uh, which song? I, I don't I know. think you're neither. So the songs that I had. The bluesy, rocky one that was good. Rock This Town? Mm-hmm. The one that Rock This Town. Oh, at the pool? Inside out. That one? No, I didn't That's tell Stray Cats. It no, I was trying to figure out like that one. There's a Huey Lewis Stevie. in the News song. It working was probably for the, that one. Working for a living when yes. she's at the, the post. That's Huey Lewis? That's Huey Lewis okay. in the News. There's I made two attempts and was still fucking wrong. Ario Speedwagon. Uh, can't fight this feeling anymore. Yeah. That one. Patsy Klein has a She's Into You song. I don't even, I think that's the title of it. She's Into You. And then no, um, the Cutting Crew had a song, but I didn't write the title of it. But yeah, the Cutting Crew had a song. <laughs> it was the last song. What was the last song? Uh, I don't know. I don't we remember. were supposed to end with the Ego segment. We're rusty, guys. Yeah. Fuck you. Judging with your emails. All right. We have, we have some more. I have more. Oh, no. I do, too. God, dude, you guys killed it. I yeah. made up, too. I made up, too. So, The Rats, uh, there was a, a remake recently, but they're, you know, the old horror movie Willard. Yes. Um, with Crispin Glover. Yes. So, I got those vibes. Um, I think Crispin Glover's in the remake, though, right? Oh, uh, I didn't yeah. even know there was an original yeah. remake. Yeah. 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 That was like a 70s movie. Oh, shit. Or I didn't hopefully know that. 80s is what I was going for. Like, I, I hope. I hope. Um, also, did you guys ever see a movie with Christina Applegate that I've seen a hundred million times called Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead? Yes. I got those <laughs> vibes with Steve at the ice cream shop because the guy that she dates is always in the burger with the hat. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I don't think yeah. it's, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but I was just like, holy, I've just seen that movie so many dozens of times that I was like, holy shit. Is that intentional? It's 80s. Holy I shit. I'm writing it. it down. So that's all of mine now. Go Steve. Uh, Hopper was eating Tostitos. Oh, there was yeah, a Back the to the Future theater. poster in the movie theater. I, they they panned so I fast, so dude. Fast. I, was li- I wanted so badly to see what the posters were. Um, Jonathan has a new poster in his bedroom. It's an REM. I saw the REM, REM poster. poster. REM um, was out in the 80s? Yep, mm-hmm. absolutely. Huh. Um, some of Dustin's toys. There was a He-Man. Um, there was an Optimus Prime. Actually, that was Ultra Magnus. Oh, shut let me up. Put, let, me put up my, <laughs> <laughs> let me put up my nerd glasses. Ultra Magnus Actually, was voiced by yeah. Robert Stack. Oh, so. Shit. <laughs> I know nothing. We we'll just let Steve take over this. My section, name is man. Ultra Magnus, and I'm here to tell you about unsolved mysteries. Um, there's a Beast Man, and uh, the whole thing with uh, Dustin's radio r- reminded me of the, um, the contraption that they build in E.T. for E.T. to phone home. Hmm. I just had that vibe. I don't know if that's a direct You're correlation. You're just showing but off now at this point. I saw some board games. <laughs> I mean, look at my ego side of my notes. This is what we fucking do. Uh, I think we're ready to move on to the chocolate pudding segment. We found the chocolate pudding. All of our top three favorite moments of the episode. Again, minor bullshit because I didn't really have any. Um, but yeah, we start bullshit. with three, go around, mm-hmm. and then two, and then one. Andy, bullshit. Yeah, um, bullshit. my uh, my first chocolate pudding was uh, Steve trying to spit game um, unsuccessfully, and his coworker pulling out the nerd board or loser board or whatever you suck board. Yeah. I think it was. <laughs> yeah, um, and him uh, throwing the uh, corporate policies out the window so he could show off his best feature, his, his hair. hair. I, that that was uh, a very endearing scene because I, I love the like little crisis that he's going through, mm-hmm. but he's still such a good guy. And, you know, it was good stuff. Uh, my number three is uh, the the moving in stereo scene with Billy at the pool and just uh, watching all the the moms ogle him. But also he has that he stops the song. like He stops the whole mood of like, the, like oh, there's this attractive guy. And they just halt everything to yell at this poor kid and call him the Lars. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> like, oh, yeah, he's an asshole. Yeah, yeah. we love him. Uh, my number three uh, was also Steve's uh, scoreboard spit in the game moment at the ice cream shop. Mm-hmm. Sam? Oh, that was mine too. It's, it's no, okay. Why was it yours? That's, that's, called, that's called I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just enjoy Steve. 
I enjoy Steve. Not Thanks, as much honey. as Billy. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> Andy, you're number two. Uh, my number two, even though the trailer ruined it, um, the uh, welcome home for Dustin, I thought was really... Completely ruined r- it. Really like, affecting. The whole time I thought it's, it happened in season two, I had seen it so many times. You know how like trailers ruin things for movies, so when you see it in the movie, it was funny in the trailer, and then you're like, you yeah. sort of make yourself laugh a little uh, bit. Eventually that goes away, and you're, you don't remember the trailer anymore, and then you just love the those scenes eventually it's going to cut, work its way all the way back around and be one of those scenes and so i'm <laughs> recognizing it now for what it's going to be someday such a good scene yes steve you're number two my number two was just the the, the introduction to the mall scene just them going through and just just seeing the mall in its heyday because that's such a big nostalgia there was no arcade and i was really disappointed about yeah. that well they have the road they have the the, the the arcade down the street but that's that's way gone now that's, that there's yes. a mall dude true um and just seeing everyone at the mall lucas's sister returning was great that was really funny where he's like isn't it past her bad time and she's like isn't it past you time to die or whatever <laughs> she's like way overboard <laughs> yeah, it's an aggressive relationship, but oddly funny. Yeah. Like, I just feel like in my head it went, shut up, poo face. And then she was like, fuck you, bitch. And I was like, damn. Dude, it made it so much more awkward that I didn't realize I was a sister. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Just bitch at the fucking mall. Like, they got beef. Andy's mind is like, man, the other black kid in Hawkins hates Lucas. This is weird. <laughs> He even said they got beef. <laughs> oh my god! So our uh, international listeners are like, I don't get it. What? <laughs> what? 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 Uh, my number two, I'm going to cheat, is the editing because I just kept noticing all the neat little things that they were doing. Um, in this episode, like I was talking to Steve, like Steve's a professional editor, and I was thinking, what the fuck is that called when they do the thing? And apparently, we don't know the name for it. I'm sure there is a name for that kind of cut, but. Well, like where you're, you've got a, a, a scene in a car and then eventually the camera drifts out the window and begins to follow a car going in the opposite direction and there's characters inside that. Uh, they kept doing that and yeah. I, I just loved the way they were, they were. It was almost. What was that one with Nancy that you liked? Uh, the best one, yeah, was when uh, Joyce and Hopper were talking about the kids and then it, Nancy walks by the storefront window and then it follows Nancy down the street to mm-hmm. her office and then carries her through the rest of that story. And it was just uh, almost like pseudo long takes in a weird way. I don't know. I just really enjoyed the editing. I thought the, they played around a lot and then it added a lot to my enjoyment. Mm-hmm. Sam? Uh, so my number two is really minor. I, I just liked uh, Hopper and his recliner watching his beat up TV and like slowly lean himself back. Um, it, I don't know why. I just... Uh, Recliners were a thing. Those those were the oh, way. We've had to a lot sit. of recliner enjoyment on this episode, yes. on this show here. So watching <laughs> his generic '80s show that we don't know what yeah. it is with Tom Magnum Selleck PI. slash Magnum PI <laughs> slash Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> right into streamingthingspod at gmail dot com to tell us what show that was. <laughs> Andy, your number one. Uh, my number one, I think, is going to be the same for all of us, which was uh, Hopper confronting Mike, and uh, that's my number oh. one as well. Going crazy eyes and. Uh, uh, losing his shit and your Nana's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, you little shit. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. That was my number one. <laughs> That's not my number one. No, no. That's, That's a good choice. It wasn't even in your top three. Fuck, <laughs> man. I, I kind of wish I put it in though because that was really fun. Right? <laughs> um, my number one is sentimental. Like I, I really like just the the scene of. Joyce coming home to an empty house. Her boys are gone. She's all by herself. She's making dinner. She's watching Cheers. And then she remembers just the better times with Bob. And it makes her sad. And I thought that was like really well done. And it was like maybe the one really sad scene in the whole episode. And it stuck out. So, and I really enjoyed it because I, I love Joyce's character. And I'm glad that they're treating her, her, um, her feelings about Bob in a real manner. Yes. I like how Billy gets dragged to the basement by a uh, Korean tentacle sex monster and mauled off screen. And you're like, the only real sad thing was that cold lasagna that Joyce was eating. No, the sad thing, which is my favorite scene, was Karen, like, finally convincing herself, like, I deserve the D. And then... She's going to get to the motel and get, well... Presumably zero D. I know, and she's her feelings are gonna get hurt because like he stood her up, but it's like no, Karen, he died. I bet what happens is he is alive but possessed, and then Karen's gonna be like, "What happened?" and he's gonna be mean to her, and then she's gonna be like, "I'm gonna go back home and get the tea." <laughs> <laughs> as much as I hate is that it, a tentacle or Ted? <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> bring the tentacles back. 
Um, I think that brings this first what was, wonderful what was reunion your number was it? Was it? Was it? Was it? Oh yeah, it was Andy's. Uh, oh okay, okay. Yeah, the Hopper scene. So that was the uh, the first episode of us being back home. So not only a reunion of the show characters, but a reunion of this show's character. And Sam's kind of like our Mad Max. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> like she's new to the crew. Yeah, we were really the original crew. Steve's the Lucas. And ah! Andy's like the mic. Like, I don't know if I trust her. You know what I mean? And I'm just some other character. Can I Does be the Steve? Steve? Probably Steve's Steve. Like really bad Steve? in the relationship? Huh? Does that mean Steve's bad in the relationship? Wait, you just said you don't like Mike. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. And you're not Mike in every way. <laughs> Um, you're not douche canoe, Mike. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you're so new, you this I'm is like, what cool we do. Name, Mike. <laughs> if you're not, welcome back. Uh, please leave us a review on iTunes or wherever the hell you're listening to this. We're available on many platforms. Uh, email streamingthingspod at gmail.com with your thoughts on how the show's going. Stranger things, not streaming things. We don't really care what you think about our show. It is what it is, right? <laughs> There's only so much we can do. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go back and watch episode two and then record on that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you'll be hearing that probably a day or two after this show. And yeah. Anyway, welcome back. We're so happy. Thank you so much. My name is Chris. I'm Andy. I'm Steve. I'm Sam. And this has been Streaming Things. Streaming Things. Streaming Things. Streaming Things. Sam, you got to whisper. Streaming Sam, thing. whisper it. Do 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 it.